This video is all about how RxJS can take your code from this to this and why the shortness of this code is not its only benefit. In most of my videos about RxJS, I will inevitably get comments to the effect of uh, promises are easier, RxJS is an overcomplication, this would be easier without RxJS and so on. Now I'm not trying to dunk on these people, some people just don't want to use RxJS and you can certainly build good applications without it. And I'm also not trying to make the claim that RxJS is easy. It isn't, it can be quite challenging to learn, uh, mostly because you also need to learn how to code reactively instead of using the typical imperative approach, which often feels more natural and obvious. The point of this video is to show that if you or your team do invest in learning RxJS and reactive programming, it won't overcomplicate your code it will make it way easier to write, understand, and maintain. So here's the scenario. We've covered this stream in some previous videos, so I'll link to those below for more detail, but the basic idea is as follows. So I have this component that will accept an array of photos as an input. It will then display each of those photos one at a time with a short delay. And if I tap and hold on the screen, it will pause whatever photo is currently displaying until I let it go. Then it will resume playing from where it was. So this is the RxJS stream to create this functionality. So I've covered how this works in detail in another video, so I'll link to that in the description if you want to know the specifics. But the basic idea is that this is sucking in the input from our current photo stream and it's adding delays to the photo emissions and displaying them one at a time. Now I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to pretend like what is going on here is obvious or easy. Uh, if you aren't comfortable with RxJS and thinking in streams, then this code is probably going to be quite hard to understand. So hooray, we have some super short code, but that isn't all that important. Readability and maintainability are much more important things to consider. So we are going to get into the real benefits of this code as we progress through the video. Now let's take a look at the equivalent code for creating this same functionality without RxJS. So that's what we are looking at on screen now, and you can see this is a considerable amount uh, bigger. So whilst our previous example was declarative and reactive, this code is imperative. So rather than declaring what current photo is and how to calculate that, we are going through all of these steps down here to imperatively modify what the current photo is. So a lot of the stuff we get for free with RxJS, we are having to handle manually here. So we need to make sure we respond properly to the input changing. So we have this ng on changes here, which sets up our initial photo and kicks off the slideshow by calling the start method. Now, rather than streams with delays, we are using a set interval to handle changing the current photo after the delay. So since we're doing that, we also need to make sure that we're keeping a reference to that interval, which we're storing as a class member so that we can clear that when we need to. So we're going to need to clear that when we get to the end of the photos, for example, or when we want to pause the stream, or if we have the input change and we have a new set of photos to display, we're also going to have to clear that interval. So each time our interval runs, we grab the photo we want by index from an array, and then we decrement the current index. So this is a very imperative way to go about doing things. We're working at a sort of very low level here. So this code is significantly longer, but as I mentioned, that alone doesn't necessarily make it worse. But, and this is a somewhat subjective opinion, I think it is fair to say that this code feels a lot messier than the previous example that we looked at. So there are a lot of places where things can go wrong here as the logic for setting the current photo is spread all around this component. So now let's get into what I think is the most compelling reason to use RxJS in this case, which is that it is more readable and less error prone. So let's consider how the current photo is calculated. So everything that could affect the current photo is right here in this red box. So I can see that it depends on the current photos stream and the delay stream and the way in which it is calculating the values is defined in these operators here. I don't need to search the entire component to understand how current photo is calculated as everything that could possibly affect its value is defined right here. On the other hand, let's consider how the current photo can be set in the imperative example. 
So we have this class member called current photo that could be set from anywhere within the component. So if we want to know how the current photo is set, we are going to have to search through the code to piece some kind of mental model together. So in the reactive example here, all I need to do is just focus on how current photo is defined. But with the imperative example, I need to go through this component and have a look at how it is being interacted with. And in this case, you can see we are setting it from two different areas. There's two different methods that we're using to change the current photo. And we also don't have any guarantees that the value won't be changed in unexpected ways. So any code in this class or even in the template could alter the value of the current photo. Again, with the reactive example, we know that everything that could affect the value is right here in this box. Whereas with the imperative example, we just don't know how that current photo might be changed unless we go and look at everything. And there are also many more ways that this uh, imperative example could break. So there's just a lot more imperative code required to make it work this way, which means there are many more places where things can go wrong, especially with situations like this, where we're dealing with looping through array indexes. Uh, it is very easy for off by one errors to creep in. Now let's get into the little bonus section for this video. So as usual, I posted the reactive code I showed you before to Twitter to get some feedback and a few responses shared the same general sentiment that this style of coding would make it difficult to add new features uh, as requirements change. Now, first of all, these were all great people and I appreciate their input. This is just me adding my perspective to the conversation, not trying to say that they are wrong. So as a scenario, we propose adding three new features to the application to see how difficult it would be to update the reactive approach to achieve it. And what we are looking at now is the result of this. So I added the ability to manually cycle through photos with next and previous buttons. So you can see I can just click on next and go through the photos and I can also click previous. And these are just going to pause on whatever photo we are looking at. I also added a way to configure the delay between photos displaying. So you can see it's playing quite a bit faster here. If I drag this over to the right, we are going to get it looping much more slowly. If I drag it all the way over to the left here, it's going to cycle very, very fast. And I also added a way to configure whether the slideshow should loop or not. So as you can see, there's obviously looping through the three photos we have now. But if I toggle this switch off, it is going to stop looping when it gets to the end. And if I play through the photos again now, it is just going to get to the end and stop. If I switch loop back on, it is going to just keep cycling again. So let's look at how this was accomplished. So first I had to add a bit of extra state to this component, which you can see at the top here. So I now have behavior subjects for any of the things that can be configured, whether it is paused, how long the delay is, whether it should loop and what the current photo is if we are manually selecting photos. So I think it would actually be nice to incorporate component store at this point, but that's not really important for this video. So I've left that out. So the bulk of the changes are in the way that we calculate the current photo. That is what we are doing after all. We're trying to display the current photo. And this stream is all about calculating what that should be reactively. But we have added a significant amount of complications to how that photo should be calculated. So naturally this stream is a lot more complex now. So to make things a bit simpler, I split out the mechanism for emitting the photos one at a time into its own stream called play current photos. So this is basically what the current photo stream used to be. This is what is going to handle displaying one photo at a time with a delay. And now what I've done with the new stream for current photo is I've used combined latest with the current photos and static photo streams because I want this stream to restart whenever either of those streams change. We then check if we have a manually selected photo. So if we do, we switch to a stream of that photo. Otherwise we just return the normal slideshow stream. So this is what is determining whether or not to just show the individual photos from clicking previous and next like we're doing here, or whether we're going to play the photos in that succession of delayed photos. So then we need to deal with looping the stream. So the goal here is that when the concat map from the play current photos stream emits the last photo, we want to replay all of the values in the stream again. So if I just turn loop off here and we play through the stream, when I get to this point right now, when the photos have finished displaying, now I want to trigger showing all of those values again. So to do this, I use the expand operator. Now this is an operator, which I've also covered in a previous video in quite a bit of detail. So I'll link to that as well. We used it in a slightly different context, but basically what the expand operator allows us to do is to keep recursively calling and emitting values from the play current photos stream. 
and this is based on some condition. So the condition we are using is if we have reached the last photo and the loop value is set to true. So if both of these conditions are met, we will call the play current photo stream again and play through those values. Otherwise we return empty and it will stop. Now the only other change of note here is these methods that I've added to the end of the component. So these two methods just handle setting the next and previous photo manually. And these two methods here are just hooking up these controls we've added to the screen to control the delay and the loop. So again, I'm not trying to pretend this code is easy or obvious. Now, even with a reasonably strong understanding of RxJS, figuring out how to achieve this functionality isn't obvious. But to be fair, this is a bit of an atypical example and far more complicated than the types of streams you would typically deal with. So more often it is just going to be stuff like dealing with piping a to-do stream to return an individual to-do that matches an ID. The stream required to create a configurable slideshow like this is significantly harder. So the point people were making is that it is easier to add features like the ones I just added imperatively rather than reactively. And for this situation, I agree with them. Coding it this way probably took me five times as long as it would have imperatively. But a lot of that has to do with your level of familiarity with RxJS and how complicated the specific situation is. So I think I am reasonably good with RxJS, but this was a scenario that required a considerable amount of thinking to figure out. In most situations though, I find the reactive approach with RxJS to actually feel more natural and I can get what I need done much faster. So there might be some situations like this that are a bit more challenging, but in general, I feel like it makes my life way easier. And it's also not about just how quickly we can get the code done. I see spending time creating a reactive approach like this as an investment in code quality and maintainability. To me, it's the same general idea as creating automated tests or using test-driven development. It might be more difficult, it might take longer, but if it is done well, it is going to improve code quality. All right, that's enough ranting from me for now. Uh, this is a highly opinionated video and this is just my perspective. So please feel free to share yours in the comments. Uh, if you like this video and want to see more like it, please feel free to hit like and subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you in the next video.